Holy Time at Home. Presented by Public Library of Cincinnati and Hamilton County. Hi everyone, I'm Ms. Alder from the Public Library of Cincinnati and Hamilton County, and I'm here to do story time with you today. So let's start off with our welcome song. Can you put your hands up? All right, let's wave. Hi, hello, and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hi, hello, and how are you? How are you today? Good job, everyone. Our first book today is going to be called The Knight Who Said No. And this is written by Lucy Rowland and illustrated by Kate Hindley. The Knight Who Said No. Oh, look, there he is with his family. Once inside a castle lived a little knight called Ned, who always picked his toys up and who always made his bed. He was polite and kind and helpful. He nodded and he smiled, but in all the village, Ned was still the only child. Do you think he gets lonely? When asked to do the cleaning up, yes is what he said. When asked to fetch the firewood, he would rush off to the shed. When asked to pick the cabbages, Ned wouldn't whine or stress. He always answered right away and always answered yes. And when each night the dragon came swooping through the sky, the knights would holler, get inside! And yes, Ned would reply. This happened each and every night. The dragon circled down and frightened all the grown-ups as she swept around the town. They'd rush inside their cottages, phew! That was close, they'd say. The Ned would watch the dragon as she slowly flew away. He thought he heard the dragon sigh and give a little groan. Ned wondered, is she just like me? Perhaps she's all alone? But when Ned's parents said goodnight and told him bedtime, Ned, well, what could Ned say but yes, of course, and off he'd go to bed. Until one morning, Ned awoke and something strange occurred. When mom said, son, please fetch the milk, Ned found a different word. He felt quite strange, all mad inside and hot from top to toe. He shook his head from side to side and then Ned answered, no. His mom was shocked. She stood and stared as dad came in to say, ah, oh, will you help me, Ned, my lad? The tournament's today. Now, can you find my shield, he asked, my arrow and my bow? But Ned still felt all prickly, and so he answered, no. Well, that was just the start of it. The nose came hard and fast. No, Ned told the butcher when he wanted to walk past. No, Ned told the baker when she wanted Ned to pay. No, Ned told the fisherman, we don't want fish today. His parents couldn't understand what's gotten into Ned. They called him in, it's time to eat. But no, Ned shook his head. Suddenly, Ned heard a whoosh and saw a flash of light. The dragon with her shiny teeth came soaring through the night. The knights all shouted, get inside, quick, hurry, Ned, they said. But Ned clenched up his fists so tight and no, yelled Ned. The dragon circled in the sky and landed on the ground. Hands on hips, Ned waited, but the dragon made no sound. So Ned walked slowly up to her and poked her in the toe. You're supposed to roar, Ned said. The dragon whispered, no, I'm so tired, fed up of roaring and I'm feeling lonely too. I wonder, asked the dragon, is there room to stay with you? Ned looked quite uncertain and he nearly answered no. But when he saw the dragon's tears, his no began to go. 
He didn't feel so prickly. His anger was no more. He felt a little brighter, sort of lighter than before. Then Ned looked at the dragon, trying so hard to impress, and thought, there's just one thing today to say. He told the dragon, yes. Oh, look at that. The dragon loved her brand new home. She liked playing with Ned. She even loved her jobs like fetching firewood from the shed. She was a good helper. And if Ned felt bad tempered, which he did once in a while, he'd go and find the dragon who could always make him smile. Then sometimes Ned would hear a shout of bedtime from below. And mostly Ned would answer yes. But sometimes Ned said no. Uh-oh, they're going for a ride, aren't they? And that's the end of that story. Ned had all kinds of big feelings in that story, didn't he? Everybody has feelings like that sometimes, right? Sometimes when I have big feelings, I like to draw a picture of them. Do you want to try that right now? Okay. I have my paper. I'm just going to draw a face and you tell me what feeling you think that face means. Okay. What do you think? That one's a happy face. Can you make a happy face too? Let's try. All right, let's try another face. Hmm. How about... Ooh, that's a mad face. Can you make a mad face too? Let's try. Ooh, I feel mad. Let's try a different face. Let's see. Let's see. Oh. That's a sad face. That face has tears falling down. Can you make a sad face like this? <sighs> All right, just one more face. Let's try another one. face. A calm and content face. Can you do that too? Let's try it like this. <sighs> all right. My next book is all about feeling happy. This one is called My Heart Fills with Happiness. It's written by Monique Gray Smith and illustrated by Julie Flett. My Heart Fills with Happiness. My heart fills with happiness when I see the face of someone I love. Oh, look at them. I smell bannock baking in the oven. Ooh, I bet there's a treat in there. I sing. Do you like to sing? My heart fills with happiness when I feel the sun dancing on my cheeks. I walk barefoot on the grass. Look, there's a little frog. I dance. My heart fills with happiness when I hold the hand of someone I love. I listen to stories. I drum. What fills your heart with happiness? Hmm. Let's think about that. That was the end of our story and the end of story time. Thanks for coming today, and I hope I'll see you again soon. All right, bye. Tough
box in the mail. Sign up today. Go to Ohio Imagination Library. Org to find out more.